blessing. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. My kingdom is not of this world. Thy own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee up to me. What hast thou done? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When Pilate asked, he was asking that question because our Lord Jesus was innocent of the claims that the Jews made upon him. They wanted to put him to death and made false accusations. But I think we could ask our Lord that same question, what hast thou done? It seems a folly that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, would come down upon the earth from heaven, from his glory, to live a life of suffering, of sorrow, of misery, a life with no consolation whatsoever, in order to obtain our salvation. And we could always ask in astonishment, what, is thy, what hast thou done? Thou hast loved us too much. In St. John's Gospel, it says that our Lord loved in excess. We can never comprehend this love of God for us. What has he done? Well, when the disciples of St. John came and asked him, Art thou the Messiah? He said to them, Go and tell John. The lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak. Our Lord has done everything, absolutely everything possible to show his love for us and to draw us into his love. The only reason God has created us is that we might be united to him. United even on this earth, but certainly to be united for all eternity in heaven. That is the sole purpose of our existence, to be united with God. <coughs> if we achieve that, we've done everything. If we fail in that, we've done nothing. So God wishes us to be united to him. He is a king. We're celebrating the feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, the king. But what type of king is he? And when was his kingship the most apparent or the most efficacious? It was when he was crucified on the cross. When our Lord hung on that cross, nailed to it, his hands and his feet, hanging there, offering his life, his divine life for our salvation, then he was in his utmost the king of love. So that was the price of our salvation. God died for us. That we might be saved. And if we wish to follow him, we must take up our cross. We cannot expect to have glory here below. We cannot expect a great kingdom, power, wealth, because our Lord wanted none of those things. He wanted to teach us detachment from everything here below. He was born in a stable of Bethlehem. He offered his blood on the eighth day of the circumcision when he received the name of Jesus. 
He lived a hidden life. He preached. He performed miracles. He was treated as a drunkard, as a blasphemer, as someone possessed of the devil. And we could almost say, well, what has thy done? Why did you do this? Who are we that you should die for us upon the cross? Who are we that you should want our salvation? And it's a great mystery because we are nothing, absolutely nothing without God. One instant and he stops thinking about us and we go into non-existence. So God is calling us to be united under the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today's collect, almighty and eternal God, who has wished to restore all things through thy beloved Son, the King of the universe, graciously grant that all the families of the Gentiles separated by the wound of sin, may be subjected to his most loving dominion. Sin separates us from God. Sin separates us from our brethren. Sin is the cause of all the division in the world. We need to stop sinning. The world needs to stop sinning. But it says here, Eius suavissimo subdante imperio. Suavissimo, the most gentle, most loving, most sweet reign. His dominion over us is sweet. Learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Take up my yoke, for it is light to bear my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Someone said to me just the other day, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody kept the commandment, obeyed the law of God, lived as Christians? And of course it would be. It would be fantastic. It would just be great peace here below. It is such a simple thing to do and yet we do not do it. Even in our own lives, we seem to fail. It is our Lord who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood. So it is through suffering, it is through pain that we are redeemed. And as I said, our Lord is the greatest in his king, is great when he hangs upon the cross. He is still king when he's born in Bethlehem. He is king when he is despised and mocked by those who were his own people. And we must be ready to suffer, to suffer for our Lord, to offer our lives for him. He has given his life and his blood. We should be ready to give our life and our blood for what we believe. So let us make sure that he is king of our hearts that he is king of our mind, that we believe everything that he has taught, that he is king of our wills, that we obey his command, that he is king of our hearts, that we love him with all our heart and mind and strength, that he is king over our bodies, that we never allow them or use them to offend him. And when he becomes king of each of us individually, he will become king of our families, over the nations. So let us give honor to our Lord Jesus Christ, the King, 
The example that comes to mind is St. Miguel Pro. The last words that he spoke were Viva Cristo Rey. Live Christ the King. And then his body was riddled with bullets. To the world, a disaster. But to we who believed, the passage into eternal life. So when we give our lives for Christ, when we suffer and die for him, the reward is eternal life. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. And we should not try to seek a kingdom at all of this world, but the kingdom that is to come. May our blessed mother, who stood at the foot of the cross, who made that suffering and offering of her life for our salvation, from whom all graces come, may she obtain for us a love of God, a love that is all consuming, that will allow us to sacrifice everything for what we believe, and by that means to get to eternal life. In the name of the Father and of the Son.